Hey guys, it's Deja Lovette and I'm back with another video. I know it's been a long time because quarantine, I was in college at the time and it was just hard to film videos. So I'm gonna try to be a little bit more consistent in the content that I have and provide a little bit more valuable content for you guys. So this is a little different and um, I just think it would be very helpful to you guys, so why not? So I'm doing a video for DoorDash and it's about how to get started and how to make the maximum amount of money doing DoorDash. So I started doing DoorDash in 2020 right after I graduated college. Um, I found a little summer job to do and then I started doing DoorDash on the side because I needed to make a little bit more income. And the process of doing it was really easy. All I had to do was download the app and then register my vehicle. And then after that, they sent me the card, the DoorDash bag in the mail in like three to four days. And then all I had to do was activate the card. And it was pretty straightforward from that. If you don't have a vehicle, you can also do DoorDash with your bike too. So don't let that stop you from doing it. And especially if you are in a very highly populated area like New York City, where it's easy to get to food places, like I would very much recommend doing DoorDash if you need some extra money on the side. Now let's get into the do's and don'ts of DoorDash and how DoorDash works. Once you get your vehicle registered or your bike or whatever mode of transportation you have, you'll have the app downloaded and there's going to be a map and the map is going to have like a red zone kind of like so that's the hot spot the areas which are getting the most traffic and the areas you're most likely going to make the most money from but those areas aren't the always um those aren't always guaranteed to make you the most money they're just showing you like what areas are getting the most traffic at but if you know your way around your town just go to different houses just go to different restaurants in the areas you know that have a lot of food places so you'll also get traffic there just because you're not in the red zone doesn't mean you will get you won't get any orders okay so once you're all registered and you're ready to go your phone is going to ding make sure you have your sound turned up your notifications on turn your phone off do not disturb again and your phone's going to ding and the order is going to pop up the price is going to show right there like in bold how much money you're going to make from doing the order and then in the fine print towards the bottom of the screen, you'll see the mileage. So how many miles it's gonna take for you to get to the restaurant and the customer and the time you should have it delivered by and how the customers want their food delivered to them. So that is pretty straightforward. And from there, you can either accept the order or you can decline it. From there, you just go to the restaurant, you pick up the food, either they tell you to go inside or you go in the drive-through. Um, I just find it easier to go inside and then you just give them the order number and they'll usually have it ready for you most of the time. You'll probably wait maybe five minutes, 10 minutes if it's a little busier. And you just kind of keep communication open with the customer that you're delivering to so that they don't think that you're just like slacking so they know like it's busy and when they'll have their food ready for them. Okay, so DoorDash isn't like a place you should be, DoorDash is not something you should be doing full-time unless you're in a very highly populated area so um like new york city like i said before dc like i don't know those big city areas i do not live in a big city but my town is like decently sized to where like i can make some money but i'm definitely not relying on doordash for my source of income you should have multiple other streams of income but um yeah so disclaimer right there because <laughs> You, you're not about to make six figures on DoorDash unless you are a fiend, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I just had to get that out the way. Um, so on average, the orders are going to range from $3 being the lowest to $15 being a good, a good delivery. Um, and then on average, like orders range from $6 to $8. And with that, knowing that, you should um, be realistic and kind of like do the math yourself and when the order pops up you will see the mileage and just you know your vehicle better than anybody so you can like kind of do that math and know is it worth accepting the order or not I try not to accept those three dollar orders unless they're really close like if the mileage is decent if it takes like a mile or two to get to the do the order it's nothing so yeah always do that because sometimes doordash will try to play you and give you three dollar orders for like something that's nine miles like i'm not doing that <laughs> get out of my face yeah so 
that's one way to maximize your orders you do not have to accept every order you get it's not going to affect whether you um are still allowed to do doordash or not the only way the only thing that's going to um kind of determine if you can still do doordash or not is if you don't complete the orders so that's starting the order and then flaking and not completing it when you signed up to do it so you can decline as many orders as you want know your worth <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to get into the good stuff. The do's and don'ts when you're doing DoorDash. I have a list, so I'm probably going to be looking down. So the first do, the first don't is going to be do not, not complete the orders. So that means if you accept an order, just go ahead and do it. Do not like flake or cancel the order because then your chances of getting more DoorDash requests are going to go down because you aren't as reliable and you are probably liable to be fired I guess I don't know what you call it fired from DoorDash so not allowed to do any more orders you can't go below a certain percentage so once you go under that percentage then you're not going to be allowed to DoorDash anymore plus it's kind of rude to the customer because you are working in customer service so it's like say I order a pizza and then the delivery driver like is on their way to do it and then they just cancel in the middle of it so then you gotta wait for somebody else and then that's gonna prolong you getting your food and the quality of the food is probably not gonna be that great because they had to find another delivery driver. My second one is communicate with your customer always. So if there's a little wait time, you can text the customer via DoorDash and you can tell them how long the wait time will be approximately and that you'll be to them as soon as possible so that they know what's going on and they won't make a complaint about you because they can complain about you, I guess, via the app and they can rate their delivery service. So not only is this important with the order it's also important when you're doing the delivery because some people want their food to be on the table or something on their front porch like a chair or something or some people want their food to be handed to them directly so if they ask you to leave their food on the front you'll just like make a text message after you deliver the food to say that the food is in this spot and more than likely you're gonna have to take a picture of it anyway because that's how the DoorDash app works when you have to leave the food on the person's doorstep. If they want you to hand them the food to them in person then always call them so that you guys have a common place to meet at and so it's just not difficult and it'll just make the process more smooth. So every time I have a order to do I'm always letting the customer know when I arrived at the restaurant, when I picked the food up, and when I dropped it off. Now I know DoorDash already does it but I just want to like just give them that reassurance because you just never know what's happening so and my next one is always get extra condiments and like um what do you call those things i guess it's condiments and silverware or um plasticware whatever they use extra forks extra knives napkins straws um because not all the people who work at those restaurants put extra stuff in the bag so that's why I always go in the restaurant too so you can just pick up some extra condiments to put in their bag or just put on top of their bag because sometimes the bag is sealed and that's just a little uh, extra step to just ensure the customer is happy and satisfied because we've all had instances where we ordered food and we didn't get our sides or we didn't get any enough napkins and yeah so that's just another way to just kind of go the extra mile my next one is the golden rule so if you want how would you want your order to be taken care of you wouldn't want somebody to be driving crazy and then the food spilling all in the bag and we've all been there when the sauce is like all spilled in the bag and it's all messy like just take care of people's food you wouldn't want that done to you so drive carefully strap the food in keep it in the red bag so it stays warm or cool and if it can't fit in the bag that's fine but um just make sure the food is just secure and the presentation is always proper. Okay, another obvious tip or maybe not so obvious is to just do DoorDash when nobody else is wanting to do it or in times of high demand. So if it's raining and the storm outside, if it's really snowy out, um, who's gonna wanna leave their house to get food? So I'm pretty sure you will be making a pretty penny because you are willing to go out in the weather and do these orders so get out there <laughs> but yeah and also the timing is perfect um timing is always key because 
around dinner time is the is a good time for orders and also breakfasts and lunch like you just gotta know like certain days you know you know the weekend at night like people yeah so you just gotta kind of you know yeah just be ready stay ready but dinner time is always like given people got kids people got a family to feed you know you know how that goes so always rely on dinner time <laughs> but breakfast still on the weekends is very popular and lunch time for people who work is popular too so yeah this is my final tip and you do not have to do this this is just me going above and beyond and just kind of like making people feel good kind of paying it forward but i like to put sticky notes on people's bag and write motivational quotes or compliments like you are amazing you are beautiful you deserve a great day and that's just a little pick me up and a way to kind of just make the customers feel better and know that their service is greatly i don't know greatly i don't know so I'll put a note on their bag and I'll also put a few mints in their bag. If the bag is sealed, I'll just put the mints on top of it. And yeah, it's just a nice gesture. Um, I feel good doing it and I'm sure the customers feel pretty good. Like I've gotten feedback. I've had customers text me saying like I made their day. And sometimes they even give you a tip after you've done the delivery. So that is another big tip because not a lot of door dashers are thinking to do things like that and it just makes the job more fun and enjoyable so yeah. if you have any questions any more questions if I didn't go too deep into details I know I didn't go too deep into the details but I think I did a good enough job um, but yeah comment like subscribe and I hope you enjoyed the video bye